yeah yes so uh, it'll be good if uh, one of us can please lead in prayer and then we can uh, get to our notes anyone who's comfortable to pray from where you are can i pray yes please <clears throat> precious father we thank you and praise you and honor you god for this wonderful morning we submit ourselves before your holy presence today we ask you father fill us with your wisdom and revelation and edify our feet to god and lord master Lord Master, give us your understanding. Give us your give us your vision. Give us your plan, O oh Lord Master. Strengthen your servant as she's going to speak, O oh Lord Master. Let it let it from your throne room, O oh Daddy. And also, I ask you prepare each one of her heart so that every word what she's going to release, O oh Father, let it be a good seed in our heart so that we can produce, O oh Father God, Lord Master, fruits for your kingdom and for your glory. Cover this. Entire session under your blood, O oh God. All the glory, honor, and all the glory and honor and uh, praises belongs to you. In Jesus' most holy and matchless name, I pray. Thank you, Master. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Shri Kumar, for uh, leading us in prayer. Uh, so we will continue. We um, talked about transfer of the prophetic anointing in the last class. And I remember there were some really good questions. And uh, you know, we understood that the anointing can be transferred. The anointing can be transferred um, um, from one person to another person. Uh, we also saw how... It can be transferred across generations. Um, we saw how the uh, desire that one has uh, is, is also, in, in a sense, instrumental in, uh, um, you know, uh, receiving the anointing. And uh, the most important thing that we saw is that the anointing is from God. So it's God who gives the anointing. So people can't give it to one another. So these are some of the key points about the transfer of the anointing. And one more very important uh, point that we saw is that the anointing uh, may not get transferred completely. Uh, or uh, if when we look at a, a particular person and their ministry, uh, they can have the anointings, several anointings to do what they need to do. Uh, but the same empowering may not come and rest upon another individual. Maybe um, uh, parts of what you see in a, in a certain individual uh, can be seen in another individual, depending on uh, the the next person's calling and purpose um, and, you know, the grace that God has given that person. And then we saw how prof prophetic ministry is very helpful uh, in giving direction to leaders, uh, not just direction, but, you know, just just um, speaking God's heart to leaders, uh, even in their personal journey. And we've seen a lot of that in the Old Testament. And that encourages us, you know, as we look at leaders today, maybe in the political uh, arena, we can hear from God for these people and uh, we can impart the wisdom of God, the direction of God to uh, leaders. So that also is encouraging. We looked at demonic opposition. We said, well, there is genuine prophetic ministry. Um, you know, Satan is, he never has the original, but he's only good at coming up with a counterfeit to the original. You know, it's only when the original is so good that uh, there is, someone is wanting to make a counterfeit to that. So the prophetic ministry is real. And whenever uh, there is genuine prophetic ministry, uh, in the Old Testament, we've seen that there has been an opposition from Satan. So Moses, uh, we talked about that when he goes to Pharaoh's courts, there he has sorcerers who try to compete with him. But we know that uh, uh, the uh, anointing uh, or the demonstration of the supernatural through Moses um, overcomes that of the sorcerers. And then we also see that. Yeah. 
uh, we also see how uh, Elijah is an individual who demonstrates the supernatural and the prophetic uh, anointing through his life. Uh, and you have the opposition from uh, the, uh, you know, the, the people practicing witchcraft uh, under Jezebel. Um, and the reality of this opposition um, uh, was unmistakable because you find Elijah uh, literally running for his life and uh, he also hid himself uh, and he came to an extent where he did not want to uh, live anymore so uh, this was because of the kind of spirits and i explained to us last time that the jezebel spirit that you know a lot of people refer to even today uh, it has to do with a demonic um uh, a demonic entity if you all remember when we did the uh, the the sessions on believers authority and demonology we said that the uh, demons have uh, hierarchy they have specializations so you know when we talk about the jezebel spirit uh, it's a class of uh, demonic spirits that engage in intimidating controlling you know manipulating seducing uh, spying spirits so these are the activities of the Jezebel spirit. So obviously, Elijah was um, being, um, uh, uh, you know, he, he was really being um, put down by, by these kind of spirits. Uh, but, you know, thank God, we know how God encouraged Elijah and he came out of his depression. Now, moving on today. We will uh, look at a couple of other things uh, from the Old Testament. And if uh, we complete it, then we'll you know, quickly go uh, to look at um, the New Testament and survey the prophetic over there. Uh, here in our notes, I am on page uh, 43, uh, where there is an incident okay, uh, in the section given here regarding public ministry, personal obedience, and ministry association. First Kings chapter 13. So here we see uh, the story of a prophet who goes to prophesy to King Jeroboam. Um, and the beautiful thing is that you know, he uh, prophesies and um, you know, Jeroboam is uh, not aligned to God. But when this young prophet brings the word of the Lord, uh, there is an obvious turnaround in the heart of King Jeroboam. And also there is a very... Uh, real, um, you know, demonstration of God's power. You know, Jeroboam he stretches his hand towards this prophet, uh, and it withers. Okay, so uh, uh, and he's not able to pull it back. So the the king knows that this young prophet is really from God, and the word which he says from God. So if you look at it. There is some amazing prophetic ministry going on. You know, the way we said that prophets would minister to kings. So here is this young prophet ministering to the king. And once uh, he uh, prophesies, brings the word of the Lord, the king wants to honor the prophet. So he says, okay, you know, uh, how about I, I give you something? I give you a reward. How, how about I give you something to eat and drink? But the word of the Lord uh, given to this young prophet was to go speak the prophecy and then to not associate, right? To not associate with anyone and to just come back. So the young prophet takes that word very seriously. And when the king offers him a reward and food, he says, no, you know, I, I don't want any of that. And uh, he, he starts heading back, you know, to his home. Uh, but on the way, in this passage, you notice that an older prophet you know, comes along and he lies to this junior prophet and says, um, uh, you know, the word of the Lord, uh, came to me and, you know, why don't you come and uh, uh, eat with me, drink with me. But then, you know, this young prophet is aware that God told him, eat no bread and drink no water. However, you know, because of uh, uh, the honor that he has for this senior prophet, he goes with the senior prophet and, you know, he eats, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, spends time, fellowships with this senior prophet. And then uh, what happens is that, 
because he disobeyed God's word, um, this young prophet actually dies. Okay, uh, he is um, put onto a, a donkey to return back to his home from the senior prophet's house, and on the way, right on the way, uh, his death occurs. So, from this incident, what is it that we learn about prophecy, prophets, um, and uh, uh, you know? public ministry. See, the beauty is that this young prophet uh, was accurate. Okay? So accuracy cannot be questioned in his ministry. Uh, you can't question well if he was really um, um, obedient to God because he was. Even the king, when, when the king uh, told him to come and uh, have a meal, he refused. Okay, so that shows that his focus uh, was towards God and that he was obedient to God. But what went wrong? You see, ministry association, ministry association. Now, it is true that we must honor the people who uh, have gone ahead of us in ministry, but, you know, not above what God has spoken to us. So we... What, what if this young prophet or the junior prophet uh, responds to the senior prophet and says, okay, I can't, like today I can't fellowship with you because I've heard from God. The young prophet knew what God had told him. And still, he could refuse the king, but he could not refuse his ministry association. And he spent time with the senior prophet. You know, So there is a lesson here for us to learn. <laughs> And the lesson is that you know, we must be um, completely committed to the word of God. Even ministry alignment, ministry association should not cause us to go away from the word that God has spoken. And also another thing is... Um, the junior prophet may have had this desire in his heart that, yeah, you know, I must get connected to a senior man of God or a more experienced man of God. And um, when he met this senior prophet, he tried to establish uh, that that uh, connection. But you know, the right way to have ministry associations is to be led by the Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit guides us and says, okay, uh, so-and-so person is somebody that you should be associated with, you should be working together with or ministering with. We go with that rather than, you know, our desire, we say, okay, uh, all these people are there and I think I should connect with uh, X, Y, and uh, Z. So uh, here is a lesson for us right, from First Kings chapter 13 about ministry association. Uh, the, the, the key thing is be obedient to God's word. You know, whether we are really young in our ministry or we grow older in our ministry, our focus should be the word of God. Okay, now let's uh, move right along to the next section here in our notes, uh, which says that in the Old Testament, we find several expressions to indicate that God had spoken. Okay, uh, it it when you read these statements, we immediately infer. Okay, they're talking about the word of God being released to them. So there are some terms like the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord, or the burden of the word. So by this, one understands that a prophet. Uh, there are different prophets who have used th these words. If you look in your notes here, uh, several verses have been enlisted. So I'm not going to read each and every verse. Um, there's Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Malachi. You know, the same term, the burden of the Lord. So this is uh, to say that there was a sense within the prophet where the prophet could perceive that God had released, you know, in today's language, we use the word download. Like you sense something has been put into your spirit. So those days, 
you know the the prophets expressed it in this ma manner and called it the burden of the lord i have received the burden of the lord uh, whatever you know it could be a word of judgment against uh, assyria against this one or the burden of the lord uh, to uh, for something so they would receive the burden of the lord and by that we understand that the prophetic word or the word of god had been put into their spirit uh, so in other words it was why the word burden okay the word burden uh, just has to do with a deep sense of responsibility okay so when you receive something that's heavy you know you can't um, you can't pretend that it's not there if it's heavy you have you you can't carry on with with the weight on your shoulders uh, you you really have to do something about it till that weight is taken off and so uh, that is the understanding so when one received the burden of the lord it was a deep sense of responsibility where the prophet had to communicate god's word to see a change whether it was in individuals or in a community so the burden of the lord uh, is something that we hear about uh, and also in some places we read that the prophets saw the burden of the lord okay now these are all just just ways of expressing that god had spoken another term or another phrase that is commonly used is the hand of the lord the hand of the lord came upon you know uh, elijah elisha uh, ezekiel is another prophet where you read this expression a whole lot the hand of the lord now once again our understanding is that the prophet perceived the word of the lord now uh, imagine you know when we are standing and somebody uh, sort of pats us on the back we can recognize hey somebody's hand is on me and so you know you you don't you don't ignore it isn't it there is the awareness of a person's hand on us so similarly when the word of the lord came to the prophets uh, it all this is a way the hand of the lord is is a way of communicating that one has heard from god then the spirit lifted me this is another uh, expression and uh, um, mainly i think in the book of ezekiel you read a lot of the spirit lifted me you know from one place to another now people uh, have these questions did he really travel physically you know ezekiel or was it was it um, uh, in just the visions it's likely that uh, uh, he traveled in his visions so when you read the spirit lifted me once again you know, this was more of the prophetic word being released to ezekiel so uh, these are the expressions that we find and you know, associated with the word being released to the prophets um there is this sense of seriousness okay shri kumar i see your question i'll i'll come to you there is a sense of seriousness okay associated um, with the prophetic word um because you see you know just the way we saw the burden of the lord when there's a burden it needs to be released so the prophets were very very serious about releasing the word and uh, they were Uh, serious about seeing situations uh, and conditions turn around by the release of their word okay uh, i'll just come back uh, to shri kumar was there a question or did you yes pastor yes ah, pastor. yes please go I ahead please to, go ahead uh, thank you yeah. uh, pastor um, is it um, when ezekiel was um, saying that he was lifted up is it um, do you want to say that um, that it was actually not physically he was not transported or uh, it was just the word was physical was lifted up means uh, it's not physically uh, yeah it, to... yeah so i mean most of the times it it had to do with um you know the the prophet the prophetic realm uh, shri kumar okay uh, so in that case when elijah was lifted up um, yeah. 
so um and um it was told that even um uh, you know elijah um you know they were it was actually he was actually the even the even the even the you know disciples of elijah said that um he, he was always used to be lifted up and the holy spirit used to spirit of the god used to uh, leave him some other part of the location so so then uh, and also when you see the philip's case that he was also physically lifted up and he was um, he was moved to a different location and also um, yeah so these are few things even even if i ask about uh, john yeah. in the book of revelation he was also lifted up and uh, even the paul also mentioned that he was also lifted up so is he not the is they are they not um, you know even in elijah's case are they not physically lifted up in that case yeah so uh, that's what i'm saying shikumar i'm saying like primarily uh, when you look at you know ezekiel the spirit lifted me it's associated with a prophetic word being released to him okay so i'm not saying that it is not possible to be physically transported it is very much possible to be physically transported okay okay thank you okay so that is not being refuted i'm saying okay. in the case of ezekiel when you read uh, the instances yeah yeah that is more of you know a vision yeah, yeah, yeah more okay, of a vision okay. thank you thank you thank you thank you yeah thank you. Sure, sure. <laughs> thank you thanks yeah so yeah we can be physically uh, transported okay great so now the next section here is about warnings and judgments so many of us when we uh, read of the old testament prophetic our mind is fixated on judgments because you have jeremiah uh, you know prophesying okay come on if you don't repent this is going to happen to you isaiah prophesying if you don't repent this is going to happen to you so there's a lot of the uh, judgments and warnings of god are uh, coming to the people yes that that does happen a lot in the in the old testament however you know we must recognize that ultimately in the nature of god is um uh, love there is forgiveness okay so even in the old testament we see that people repenting turns god's judgment around okay the wonderful example would be the prophet jonah now jonah goes he prophesies to uh, nineveh and uh, you know the people turned around isn't it and jonah was so angry because the word of warning and judgment which he brought to the people was not fulfilled why because the people repented so yes there are warnings and judgments but you know the 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 core nature of god which is of love you know that also comes across because when people repented the prophetic word was never fulfilled now another really nice example is from the life of ahab you know ahab and jezebel we talked about them in the context of elijah and ahab and jezebel are known to be very very wicked rulers okay so uh god gets angry with ahab and a word goes out through uh, elijah which you know prophesies and tells ahab that he is going to die uh, a very very difficult death okay so i'm just trying to find the portion there okay yeah it's right here let me read it for us it's in our notes okay so god tells elijah the tishbite arise go down to meet ahab king of israel who lives in samaria there he is in the vineyard of naboth where he has gone down to take possession of it you shall speak to him saying thus says the lord have you murdered and also taken possession and you shall speak to him saying thus says the lord in the place where dogs lick the blood of naboth dogs shall lick your blood even yours behold i will bring calamity on you i will take away your posterity and will cut off from ahab every male in israel both bond and free i will make your house like the house of jeroboam the son of nebat and like the house of baasha the son of ahijah because of the provocation with which you have provoked me in anger and made israel sin 
okay so as you can uh, understand it was a, a, a really uh, hard uh, word of judgment that came upon ahab however so we see that ahab heard these words he tore his clothes you know tearing one's clothes is an expression of repentance so he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning so basically ahab is expressing his repentance okay and then you know you see that uh, the judgment which came upon him it didn't ha things didn't happen exactly the same way but you know uh, the the judgment kind of it was um, uh uh toned down in a way i mean it all it didn't uh, come upon him at once but you know it it kind of slowly unfolded on ahab so god did relent and god did change the 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 kind of judgment that came upon a wicked person like ahab so you know uh, yes the prophetic word in the old testament had to do with judgments quite a lot but god um, always relented when people had a change of heart uh, and you know people made a turn around and that's something we must remember how does that apply for us in in today's scenario again you know we will look at it when we study um, the prophetic word in our context you know releasing the prophetic word because sometimes people are very fixated on the word of judgment you know any prophetic word that is spoken is a judgment god is going to do this to you or this is going to happen to you but you see uh that generally that's not who god is isn't it you know he he is a god of love but yes there are instances uh that uh, have to do with warnings and judgments okay so we see that in the old testament now there are times when uh, it is as if god refused to speak okay we know that our god is a god who always speaks he communicates to us but what caused him not to speak one would be rebellion uh, in the case of saul now we are all aware that saul when he was anointed you know god had great expectations from him however you know he went his own way and uh, he engaged in things that did not glorify god so towards the end of his tenure as king we we find that uh, Saul continued to inquire of the Lord. In 1 Samuel 28:6, it says, "And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by urine or by the prophets." So, rebellion will keep God's word away from us. Okay, uh, uh, and you know that's something for us to recognize. Again, in the book of Ezekiel. idolatry people being engaged in idolatry um was something that really put uh, god off and when people inquired of the lord the word of the lord was not released to the people so you know in general god is not a god who punishes by keeping silent he never does that but you know we see these two instances idolatry rebellion that uh, uh, god chose not to answer okay now how do we apply this in our context you know there are times when we feel why is god silent or why is god not saying anything uh, even though i'm praying about a certain matter you see god if he's not speaking uh, in in a in a particular situation uh, it might just mean that he wants to speak to us at another time in another way right uh, uh, so so God is a God who speaks, but if He is not speaking, or if He seems to be keeping silent, generally it means that He wants to speak to us at another occasion in another way. Okay, so that's how we uh, we interpret that and we take it in our life context. Now, um, yeah. what else is there in the old testament the spirit of god moving through the old testament prophets so there are certain uh, new testament scriptures that talk about the holy spirit releasing his word or, or inspiring 
prophets of the Old Testament. So uh, the passage from First Peter one verses ten through twelve, you know, that also talks about uh, you know salvation. The prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace. Excuse me, that would come to you, uh, and then you know basically they talk about the revelation that came through the prophets. Also, Second uh, Peter one verse twenty and twenty one it talks about how uh, no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. You know, even when we take the Bible, the entire Bible, all the books of the Bible, we know that it was written by the inspiration. Of the Holy Spirit, so in that sense, it is a prophetic word. It is a prophetic word, and also we notice how the Messiah, the life of the Messiah, okay, the the prophets released prophetic words. What to do with that? So all of Scripture, in that sense, when when we study it, has a lot of prophecy in it you know and also you could say because it was all inspired it was inspired by the holy spirit uh, it is uh, a prophetic prophetic uh, you know output in that sense okay now coming to the difference between the old testament and the new testament prophetic experiences the old testament as we saw is quite dramatic Okay, uh, not that today's experiences can't be dramatic. Yes, you know, even we could uh, experience being transported. Um, the spirit lifted me. Uh, the burden of the Lord came to me. God's word was like fire in my bones. You know, one could have such experiences. Um, but in general, in the New Testament, what what we see happen is that. We all have the indwelling Holy Spirit with us, okay? And because of that, um, the prophetic word, you know, many a time could just come in a in a sort of a simple way, okay? And also, we see in the Old Testament, just a moment, there's someone's video. Okay, sorry about that. I have to mute you. Yes. So... <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. I, I said that in the um, New Testament, the Holy Spirit indwells us. But in the Old Testament, the Spirit of the Lord came upon people. Now, the other difference would be that prophecy was limited only to the anointed. So you had um, the prophet prophesying or a priest Okay, a priest, a high priest, people like them are hearing from God in certain instances. However, in the New Testament, every single believer can prophesy. Okay, so those are the uh, major differences. So at this point, any questions, any thoughts? I'm just looking at the chat here uh, and it says... Okay, so Shri Kumar is saying, um, there are prophets who speak like Old Testament prophets in the church. Can we receive their prophets? So, uh, yes, Shri Kumar, you know, the, the delivery style can be very different. Some people could, you know, speak like, thus says the Lord. And, you know, it, it almost sounds like lightning and thunder. But as long as it's the prophetic word, I think it's good. You, you can still receive it. And then there are others, you know, who might just say, uh, I was praying and uh, uh, this is what I sense. Uh, this, this, this is going to happen. You just receive it. What's important is the prophetic word, not necessarily the, the delivery. So if we, can, if we can focus more on the word than the style of delivery, I think that that is good. Pastor in case sometimes, uh, you know, sorry, uh, sometimes they they speak like, uh, you know, they release the judgment on the people. And uh, that is the, that is the thing I'm asking. Like, oh, sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes they speak judgment on the people because, you know, that, you know, the curse is coming. <coughs> and, mm. Uh, mm. and it's like, uh, you know, uh, it's like uh, for the new believers or uh, like, you uh, know, it is rather than edifying their faith. As it is written that the prophecy should edify the 
faith but sometimes it you know brings lot of fear in the heart of the people so in that maybe their prophecies i'm not saying their prophecies will not be right but uh, the way how they the speak judgments directly and in between there are prophecies maybe right also but uh, in some cases that can uh, you know bring uh, rather than building their faith um that can bring lot of fear in their heart so in that case uh, how can we deal the things thank you yeah thank you a uh, really good question uh see that's the reason we are studying scripture okay and from scripture we see that words of warning and judgment uh it is part of the prophetic okay now it is definitely part of the prophetic but in general okay uh we we don't see god do that so if if i put it in a way that you can understand what i'm saying is 99.9% you have you know direction you have uh, um encouragement you have things like that happening but maybe a 0.01% is the warning that comes from god okay so when we see someone releasing words of judgment and warning constantly we have every right to kind of say okay i'm shutting down this this can't be from god you know so we we can have that maturity and we can be like okay forget it you know god is not a god who is going around threatening people and making them scared and pushing them away not at all because that does not match up to the core of the prophetic that we are talking about right now okay so unfortunately a lot of people don't know and they they listen and they take that word uh, shri kumar yeah yeah so, very true very true yeah. thank you thank you pastor thank no you no problem yeah and and it really breaks the spirit and it draws them away from god so you know the whole point of the prophetic is defeated very true very true yeah thank you okay right thank you okay i'm just looking at the chat here samuel i'll come to you uh, there are some questions where there false prophets yes yes uh, kennedy there were um uh, you know false prophets as well remember when we first started uh, we talked about the test of accuracy uh, and and we said that there can be people who say thus says the lord or in the name of god but what they're saying is in a incorrect okay so there were false prophets there are false prophets uh, there are false prophecies yeah so that that is that um anita prophet does not have to be honest his character as in case of the one who was supposed to curse israel yeah so yes uh, anita uh, a prophet the character of a prophet is very important we will study about it uh, later on as well um so when when the prophet has character you know it's it's like the wine skin that holds the wine the wine is the prophetic anointing now if the character is broken or the wine skin is broken the wine will not last very long you know eventually it will leak out and eventually you know it it, it is not contributing to the growth the uh, maturing of the body of christ so it's a very unfortunate thing but yes uh, the 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 character of the prophet is important a prophet has to be honest i hope that that answers your question for now anita okay yeah she says yes okay uh, samuel coming to you please go ahead Mm, thank you pastor uh, can you hear me okay. yes yes yeah, very well um so pastor um on the topic of the nature of prophecy which is when we when we look at the bible uh, we see the majority of the recorded prophecies that we have is about warning and judgments especially uh, uh, you know around uh, people who seem to you know like god has chosen them for a purpose like like david God's anointed him, put him on a place, and he seems to be going astray. And God uses Prophet Nathan to uh, tell him that you've done something wrong. And similarly for Ahab and other most cases, like God has chosen, like Israel as a nation, God's chosen body, uh, and they are, you know, some some of the things they are doing wrong. And then God uses his prophet to say, like, you guys are doing wrong. You guys are not working. 
walking in God's way. So repent, come back, and God's calling you back. And uh, so, but now what we're saying is that's kind of flipped. Uh, so the, the nature of prophecy is now it's more, uh, it's not about warning and judgment. Like you know, it's in very less, the lesser percentage of the warning, but it's more about God has this plans for you. God's going to bless you. You know, God has, God's going to use you for me. So it's, it's, uh, it's more on encouragement and less on warning. Like, so, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, like, if, if, if we were to replicate what was happening in the Old Testament, so that a, a direct similarity would be, I mean, in my mind, I think it's like, let's say there's, there's, um, there's a really great um, chosen body of, like a church of God, you know, something like a mainstream church and all that, but... They, and, and they've gone to a heights of success, um, and uh, but some of the things in that, uh, you know, their mismanagement and all that, and and God would, I would, I would think like God would choose a prophet to talk to the leaders of that church and saying like, you know, we blessed you and you guys have become big now, but you've lost your way and and repent, come back, things like that. But we don't we don't see that. We don't see that. But all the prophecies that we see happening is more about. God's going to increase you more, bless you more. So, so has like so is say so A is 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 there a a real change? And is there like is it is it because what Christ did on the cross? Uh, is is it because of that that the nature of prophecy has changed from warning and judgments to blessing and prosperity? Is is, is that and and is there like a biblical, um, biblical, you know. Uh, reasoning or, or biblical scriptures to to kind of back up uh, this, this this change of the nature of prophets thank you yeah yeah thank you thank you sam uh, i i see where you're coming from so i'm not saying that the nature of god has changed or the nature of prophecy has changed that's not what i'm saying what i'm really saying is that um when it comes to the release of the prophetic word, okay, if there is a judgment required or a warning required, that does happen. Okay, So it definitely does happen. Uh, now, looking at the context of the New Testament believer, okay, or the post-New Testament believer, as you rightly put, you know, we are in the era of grace. So it's not so much as your old testament uh, uh, prophecy you know the warnings and things like that because we can go to god we can ask for forgiveness and you know our sins are forgiven through the lord jesus christ uh, and when it comes to the release of the prophetic word i am talking more uh, okay right now i was talking more in terms of the simple gift of prophecy as we saw in first corinthians 14 and verse 3 exhort edify comfort so that is your simple a gift of prophecy however you know, we will we will study the progression of the prophetic so going from the simple gift to the prophetic ministry to the office of the prophet uh, invariably it is something that is done at the level of the office of the prophet the warnings the judgments you know that there's more of that in the office as compared to a simple gift so generally the simple gifts are more like hey you know god god is blessing you so that's how God tends to speak for whatever reason. And for us, like we, we are going to be practicing more of the release of the gift, isn't it? So we don't have to get maybe once or twice. God might give a warning to us. And again, why does God give us that word of warning to bring that person back, not to destroy the person? See, I, I'll tell you, uh, I, rem I still remember in the weekend school pastor gave this example. Somebody went and told a young man, uh, this is a prophetic word, okay? Praying over a young person. You imagine how it will be. Praying over that boy and saying, uh, the, this is, thus says the Lord, in two months, <laughs> sorry, you are going to meet with an accident and you are going to die. Uh, this is going to happen. That is going to happen. And at the end of that word, that boy is shaking. He's like, are you serious? Am I going to die in two months? Now, it has not built him up in any way. And I think he came and told uh, Pastor, I, I don't really exactly remember the, the word and the context. But yeah, that's something like that happened. And uh, then Pastor said, okay, don't worry about it. You know, 
you, you just keep it aside you begin to see god and and uh, you just continue to pray he lived way beyond those two months and he did very fine and you know whether the prophetic word is accurate or not the fear that it brings into your heart might you know give you a sickness or uh, might cause you to die uh, now obviously things like that are not from god but unfortunately words like that are being given to people you're going to die you're going to have an accident you will have a divorce like that's not god that's definitely not god you know so what i'm trying to say is when the warnings come and the judgments come uh it's it's very obvious you know when a, when a people have gone astray from god they they are rebelling and uh we'll also see when we talk about the releasing of the prophetic word we'll try to stay away from warnings and judgments we we leave it to the people in the prophetic office or the prophetic ministry we may in our lifetime get a few words of judgment correction here and there but invariably you know it would be words of encouragement comfort uh, that you know you and i receive as a gift of prophecy so th- does it make things a little clearer sam a, a bit pastor a but bit. i think yeah a bit but yeah. my major question is around um, and one is like the i think generally the nature uh, the the format of the prophecies of warning and judgment is because you did this so even even for david it was like because of this sin this is what's going to happen you know so so it's not directly like you're, you're going to have an accident like for no reason but but like you know because you a straight from god because you've done you allowed this idol to come in or this sin to come amongst you because you entertained a person who is doing this uh, god's going to bring this uh, so that that was one but the other thing is like just that 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 thing like um god using prophets to bring out the hidden sins of uh, especially his people we don't we don't get to see much of that and and i i am thinking like if if we did hear then that that would also be like okay god is showing me the idols that i am like god, god is showing me my blind spots yeah. and uh, i realize that and and that is definitely an edification uh, but but we don't get to see that so yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, sam that's also because we have the holy spirit who does the work of you know convicting us of righteousness sin and judgment so a lot of that is going on within the believer already Yeah. I see that. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh we have uh, about 2 minutes and I see two hands raised so I hope we can uh, quickly accommodate these questions. Ashish Kumar please go ahead. Thank you pastor. Uh pastor um, as you said about um, the false prophets I just want to know one thing that um, um is is the is that the only parameter where we say that uh, speak that uh, you see the accuracy of the prophecy? so in that case if that is the only case then when the the, the when the paul and the silas was prophesied by that uh, the, the that girl when uh, you know uh, she was possessed with the spirit of divination and she said that uh, these are the servants of god so that prophecy was accurate actually there is nothing wrong in that uh, that prophecy actually so if you if we take that to the accuracy is the only parameter uh, to to do, to find out that this is a false prophet or a, uh, or the true prophet then um uh how can i able to uh, know that um you know um because this 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 person also speaks the right thing like you no know, as i said about uh, this paul and silas that girl spoke the right thing only they were the servants of god and that uh, she has not prophesied anything wrong so so how can we uh, you know come to a conclusion that this is a false prophecy or uh, this is a, or the, this is a false prophet or this is the true prophet of god Oh. uh yeah yes uh, shikumar a uh, good question and uh, shikumar if you remember earlier we have we've touched on this we said that it's not just the accuracy but you know whether or not that word draws you closer to god okay so um if you could just go back you know to our notes here uh, and uh, look at it yeah 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 so thank you thank yeah you. okay so it's not just the accuracy of the word but it's also what that word uh does to our relationship with god that's also very very important okay uh say yeah sure say what would you like to ask um uh, no um n- n- not to worry ma I, i think because of time already like maybe okay. next week yes maybe next class okay fine fine 
all right so uh, we have um, run out of time uh, but i think all this is a good start so we will look at the new testament uh um, incidents and you know things about the prophetic in the uh, next class and then keep you know moving forward from there but i think we might move a little faster because we have to complete the prophetic as well as the apostolic um uh, but uh, yeah it is going to be a, a good journey together so let's close with a very quick word of prayer uh, request someone to pray please and then we close Uh, say, can you please pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this class we've just had, and we thank you for an instructor who you've used, oh Lord, to instruct us, to teach us. We pray that for all that we are learning, Lord, we pray that you will build us, Lord, in your word, Lord, to be used as verses to bring words that will build, words that will defy, words that will comfort as we prophesy into the lives of people. And that we pray that we'll be more attuned to the Spirit, Lord, to be convicted of everything that, Lord, you're speaking, Lord, through your prophets unto our lives, that they're indeed from you. And we pray that as we continue, Lord, in this class, Lord, we pray that we will continue to grow more and more in the knowledge of what you have called us into in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as we go for next class. Give us the grace and give us the wisdom, Lord, to understand all that will be taught in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Say. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day, and we'll meet again next week. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 God bless.